Hi, welcome to the channel again. Thank you for clicking to watch this video. If you are new here, please consider subscribing for educative and informative Africa content. In this video, I want to discuss pre-colonial history of money in Africa. In plain English, what did our forefathers used to use to represent money before Europeans colonized Africa? Please show me some love, like, share and subscribe if you have not already done so. Our forefathers in Africa managed multiple currencies before the arrival of the European. Various items they used to represent money in most cases mediated the four functions of money. When the Europeans arrived, they defined some of our forefathers' transactions as butter. What actually is butter? Bata is a system of exchange by which goods or services were directly exchanged for other goods or services without using a medium of exchange such as money. When people batter, everyone benefits because they receive items or services they need or want. Battering also has an advantage because even people without money can get something they need. In various parts of the world and Africa, butter trading was the most common form of trade. Let me give an example of butter. Coffee has two goats but want to get some corn. Meanwhile, Adam has some corn but wants some goat. If the two can find each other, Coffee might trade one of his goats for some of Adam's corn. In this transaction, no medium of exchange was used. Money was not needed. One product or services was traded for another. Another example could be that a shoemaker could make shoes for someone who has corn, and the one who has corn receives shoes and gives some corn to the shoemaker. This system was not sustainable because of its various limitations. For example, a cattle farmer could not trade meal for sanders with shoemaker who possessed his own cattle where he could get milk from. But he could trade a generally acceptable high term exchangeable for any good or service. This was the point when money came into the picture. Another limitation of battery system was difficulties in offering precise amounts to trade. I mean, one value in exchange for equal amount of value. For example, a fisherman offering 10 units of fish for a goat will get nowhere with a shepherd who thinks his goat is worth 50 fish. Also, people did not necessarily have tradable goods to batter just when they needed to obtain other goods. Let's talk about money. What is money? Money is a medium of a king. For an item to be called money, it needs to mediate the four functions of money as follows. It needs to be a unit of account, it needs to be a store of value, it needs to be a medium of a king, and finally, it needs to be a standard of deferred payment. I won't bother to explain the four functions of money in detail to avoid a long video. Some of the currency in pre-colonial Africa made it some, if not all of the above functions of money. There are four types of money, but I will just discuss two of them, which are commodity money and fiat money. Commodity money in plain English relates to an item of value that is being used as a medium of exchange, example is gold or silver. Fiat money, on the other hand, relate to the modern money of banknotes and coins that do not really have value. Well, let me just say that it has value which is set by the government order. Example is a Nigerian Naira or Ethiopian dollar or the most popular currency in the world, United States dollar. What item did our forefather use as a medium of a king before the Europeans arrived to colonize Africa? Let me just go further to talk about this item, various items our forefathers used. The first one I want to talk about is bar of salt. Some of our ancestors used bar of salt as medium of exchange. The mines slabs of pure salt, which were easily cut into standardized sizes and exact measurement enabled more precise exchange. There was an account of a man called Ibn Battuta who documented his experience of traveling. Ibn Battuta was a Muslim traveler born in Morocco in North 
Africa. He documented people he encountered in his travel and his observation about how the afro eurasian world connection had expanded in the 14th century. According to Ibn Battuta in the 14th century, he wrote, At Walata, a load of salt brings 8 to 10 miku that means half an ounce of gold the negroes use salt as a medium of a chain just as gold and silver is used elsewhere they cut it into pieces and buy and sell with it Walata is referring to in his account relate to a town in the Mali Empire during that time. Bauso was also a common feature in Utopia alongside other primitive money like pieces of cloth and bar of iron. Let me now talk about one of the most popular item or object that was used before the colonial time um, which is Kauri. In 17th to 18th century Central Africa in Cuba Kingdom located in what is now the Democratic Republic of Congo used two major currencies. These were Kauri and raffia cloth. In part of the trade route near Cuba or Congo Kingdom, they call Kauri Nzibu or Zimbo. Ghanaian currency, the cities derive its name from Kauri shell. Cities mean Kauri in the Akan language. A few of the heli coins bear a picture of Kauri shell. This was the way to connect currency of independent Ghana with the pre colonial past when Kauris were actually used. A lot of the other African kingdom used cowries as currencies including part of Bini kingdom in Nigeria. Some versions of cowries shell arrived through Arab trader to Africa. Cowries continue to circulate as currency as late as 1901. Let's now go on to talk about one of the most valuable currencies the gold we all know the gold is really very popular with ashanti kingdom in the present day ghana they use gold as commodity currencies as both medium of a king and product of trade in fact actually not just the ghana um the present day ghana also a lot part of the mali empire so which has one of the well they said according to scholar is the richest man ever to live so that is um, Musa Musa so in 17th century the gold trade was the lever of power for the Akan um, uh, kingdom in, in Ghana. The next one I want to talk about is Baklo. The kingdom of Buganda in present day Uganda prized popular items like horse, goats or cows they prize them in Baklo. The kingdom king who is called Kabaka do receive tribute in Baklo. The last object I want to talk about is coins. Archaeological evidence shows that our ancestors minted coins before the arrival of the European. The kingdom of Axum and Swahili in a sultanate of the Eastern Africa coast were one of the first kingdoms to mint their own coins. The biggest part of the coins exhibited by archaeologists along the coast are copper coins produced in the town of Kira. Minting on the Swahili coast lasted until 15th century when the arrival of the Europeans promoted the use of international coins such as Spanish Piasta and Maria Teresa Terras. Hope you found this video useful. If anyone is interested to read more, I'll put a link to some of the resources below. Please let me know what you think about this video. If you have not already subscribed, please subscribe for more educative and informative Africa content.